please stand if you are able to for the entry of the procession and remain standing for the national anthem.
Please be seated. Chancellor Taylor, ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, including those who are joining us today through our live webcast, and especially our soon-to-be graduates, we offer our warmest welcome to the most wonderful event of our university's year. My name is Robert Bailey, and I am UOIT's Provost and Vice President Academic. I hereby declare that the 2018 Convocation of the University of Ontario Institute of Technology is now in session. <laughs> We gather this morning to celebrate the graduates of our master's, diploma, and bachelor programs in arts, education, and science. Cogitando et agendo ducamus, by thinking and doing, we shall lead. The university is proud to acknowledge the lands and people of the Mississaugas of Scugog Island First Nation, which is covered under the Williams Treaty. We are situated on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas, a branch of the greater Anishinaabe Nation, which includes Algonquin, Ojibwe, Odawa, and Bodwatomi. To bring positive energy and start things off in a good way, Indigenous peoples traditionally begin gatherings with a ceremony known as smudging. I now call upon traditional knowledge keeper Rick Bork to perform a smudging ceremony, followed by Kim Wheatley and her daughter Alexandria B. Patnath from the Shawanaga First Nation to share with us an honor sing song. You cleanse yourself and the area you are in using smoke from the burning medicines. Rick is smudging with sage, cedar, sweet grass, and natural tobacco to balance the positive energies and bring clarity of purpose and heartfelt inspiration to our ceremony on this stage and the lives of our graduates in the future. Please now rise if you are able for the honor song. Kim and Alexandria. Good morning, graduates. Congratulations and good morning, guests. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional territory that we are on. I'm honored to sing in the uh, homelands and treaty territories of the Mississaugas of Scugog Island. I'm going to introduce myself in my language. Anin Bojo, Mishike and Dodem, Shkudenigan Wawaskon and Indishnikaz, Shawanaga and Dunji, Richmond Hill and Dunjaban, Nishinaabe, Kwe Ojibwe and Dao. We want to offer a song of connection, unity, hope, and celebration. So the song we're going to offer to you this morning is the unity song with the hope and the intention that our lives will be forever intertwined as you begin the journey towards whatever it is that you are celebrating today. Um, and we want to thank you so much for taking the time to not only listen to us, but to think about where you're going to go, what path you're going to take, and what excitement and life experiences you're now going to embrace. Oh, 
Miigwech, Rick. Enjoy this moment. Kim Alexandra, Miigwech. Please be seated. The university is honored to have you start our convocation off with such positive energy and clear purpose. Miigwech. I now call upon Chancellor Noreen Taylor to address convocation. Chancellor Taylor. Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to be here. And I first want to say congratulations not only to our graduates, but to their families and friends who are seated in this great hall. It's marvelous that you took the time to celebrate a great achievement. It is my honor to speak to you today as the third chancellor of the University of Ontario Institute of Technology. As many of you know already, I knew about this university when it was just a dream, a dream that took several years to achieve. And look at it now, going fast forward from those days to today, I have to admit I'm impressed at how quickly that dream has grown into this wonderful reality. And now with our newly installed president, Stephen Murphy, I'm convinced that however great the beginning days were, the future that's about to unfold for you will be both amazing and built upon the strong foundations you have all built together. Walking into the convocation today, actually I saw this yesterday, and I was so impressed there was advice I think you all need to hear. It came from um, that great hockey legend, Wayne Gretzky. And he encouraged everyone to try their best and to be ready to face every challenge. And while you might not go on to be a great hockey player, I think what he said is really important. He said, no one hit 100% of the shots they didn't take. I know that what he wrote about hockey truly applies to every challenge you will face. So be incredibly proud of what you've achieved today, but also be prepared that this is the first of many steps and meet them all with the courage of that courage song. And I know you'll go on to fulfill your destinies and be the champions you were born to be. Thank you. Thank you, Chancellor Taylor. I now call upon President Stephen Murphy to address convocation. Stephen? Good morning. What an exciting day. First of all, I want to congratulate all the graduates here today. This is your day, so be loud, be enthusiastic, be proud. Let's hear you. Absolutely. You should feel rightly proud of all the work that you've done to get you here today. It has taken an incredible amount of work. On your behalf, I'd also like to thank the family and friends that came out today. We also celebrate their encouragement and support of you throughout their academic careers, and let's give them a round of applause. Well done. As you leave UIT, I'm confident that you're ready to meet the changing nature of work. Our hands-on, experiential approach develops graduates like yourselves who are adaptable to change. As a technology university with a social conscience, we understand that technology is not inherently good or bad. It is humans like yourselves, who will code, design for privacy, adapt for our democracy, and improve our lives. You are the tech leaders that social, with a social conscience that is so badly needed in society. As social scientists, you'll be playing an essential role as technology continues to evolve. For every new technology, we need a thinker who calls out the ethical risks, and we need policy pitfalls to understand them and the impact of technology on the masses. We need the teachers you have become who understand technology, who will help to ensure our children are learning those skills early. We believe in a university that teaches best by doing. Because of the tech you inherit, you force us to be a better institution every day. We're now ranked in the top 10 of undergraduate institutions in Canada, according to the last McLean survey. And we're on a trajectory to keep moving up, which will continue to increase the value of your degree. Our women's soccer team finished first in OUA division, 
and spent much of the season ranked number two nationally. Yes. The men's soccer team, for the first time, hosted a home playoff game and captured a program high four provincial awards, while the Ridgebacks rowing team made it to the podium for the first time since 2012. And you may have heard the rumors that men's and women's varsity basketball will begin in 2019. All of this points towards the student experience and creating a sticky campus where students want to stick around. Entrepreneurial leaders focused on tech and imbued with a social conscience were the founders of this university and you have benefited from the high touch experiential approach. When you picked UOIT as your place for education, maybe it was because you're aware that technology would play such a pivotal role in your future. Maybe you wanted to be among the 90% of students who participated in experiential learning to help you get a job. Perhaps you were inspired by the entrepreneurial spirit of our campus and are starting to build your own business. Regardless of your path forward, it is unlikely that any job you have will not be somehow transformed by technology. Our goal was to prepare you for this disruption, to ensure that you are ready to face a future career in which technology will play a pivotal and daily role and to make you adaptable to change. During your time here, you've had an impact on our community. This may have been through capstone projects that you completed, students who participated in the Faculty of Social Science and Humanities Practicum Poster Day were able to draw the connections clearly between their academic work and their community work placement experiences. While Faculty of Education students who worked with the Durham District School Board opened an outdoor kindness garden at Oshawa's Glen Street Public School, an activity that brings more awareness about agriculture and food production and teaches concepts like sustainability, environmental awareness, stewardship, collaboration, and leadership. And the amazing accomplishments from UIT students are making our impact global. Last year, over 70 students representing all of our faculties participated in international exchange. And this year, students in the Bachelor of Education program tra traveled to Sao, Sao Paulo, Brazil, and participated in a 10-day field course called Poverty, Access, resistance and resilience in Latin America. Going forward, these experiences and skills and your volunteer work will prepare you well for your future. You're facing a world on the edge of change and UIT welcomes its newest Canada Research Chair in the Internet of Things. This reflects the huge impact that technology will have on ushering in a new industrial revolution. It might mean that the jobs your parents or grandparents held will disappear but only 5% of the jobs thought to be are completely automatable, so it's more likely that skills will change. This does not mean today that you're at the end of your academic career. Technology is changing so fast that to stay current with your future, you will by necessity include more education. I hate to tell you, I see some faces. <laughs> It may come in the form of a short course, a module, a series of certifications, or even an entirely de new degree. But the foundation that you've built here will form a solid groundwork upon which you can learn those new skills. And we're facing disruption, so we're gonna be prepared to help you to upskill in the future by coming back. I would urge you to take the time today and in the coming days to really own your accomplishments. As you get older, you'll realize the importance of celebrating key milestones in your personal and professional lives. Take the time to celebrate with friends, family, and especially by yourself in a contemplative moment to think about how far you come, how far you've come. Like us, you should be justifiably proud. At times like these, I think of the French parting words, au revoir, which is not goodbye, but until we meet again. Be that change that the world so desperately needs. Congratulations. Thank you, President Murphy. I would now like to present the candidate for the honorary Doctor of Laws degree to be confirmed, conferred by UOIT. Mr. Craig Kielberger 
and Craig on behalf of his brother Mark. Craig? For more than 20 years, the brotherly mission of Craig and Mark Kielberger has improved the lives of hundreds of thousands of children around the world and has sparked a life-changing passion among an entire generation of young change makers. Determined from the time they were young to raise awareness about child labor around the world, the Kielberger brothers traveled to South Asia to meet street children and connect with young people laboring in factories. Their passion to make a difference led them to co-found the International Development and Youth Empowerment Organization, WE, formerly Free the Children. WE now includes WE Charity, Me to WE, a social enterprise promoting sustainable change, and WE Day, a series of arena-sized annual youth empowerment events in cities across Canada, the United States, and the United Kingdom. WE has gone on to build more than 1,000 schools around the world, directly providing 200,000 children with an education and has facilitated sustainable and locally run healthcare, clean water, and sanitation programs for more than one million people. <laughs> WE has empowered more than 30,000 women with the financial independence to support both themselves and their families. Both Order of Canada recipients, Mark Kielberger was named a young global leader by the World Economic Forum. Craig Kielberger was named a laureate of the World's Children's Prize in 2006. Chancellor Taylor, for their distinguished achievements as humanitarians, social entrepreneurs, authors, and activists for the rights of children, the university proudly confers upon Craig Kielberger and Mark Kielberger the honorary degree of Doctor of Laws. I think you've earned that applause. On behalf of the on Academic Council of the University, I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Law, uh, Laws Honoris Causa and grant you all the honors, rights, and privileges appertaining hereto. Congratulations. I now call on Dr. Craig Kielberger to address convocation. Craig? Good morning. Firstly, Chancellor Taylor, thank you. President and Vice Chancellor, Dr. Murphy. Provost, Dr. Bailey. Distinguished members of this group, family who has gathered, and most importantly, to all those University of Ontario Institute and Technology students who are graduating here today, congratulations to you. you know, standing in front of his alma mater, and reflecting on his own graduation, a former US President George W. Bush said the following words. To those of you who are finishing with straight A's and receiving honors, congratulations. I'm sure you'll go on to do great things. And to those of you who are graduating with a C minus average, perhaps you too will be President of the United States someday. All jokes aside, I talk about a true quote though, which makes you reflect. Um, all jokes aside, I actually draw inspiration from the words that I want to share with you from three words that you know so well from your time on campus. Challenge, innovate, and connect. Challenge, innovate, 
and connect. First, that word challenge. I know there are many challenges to arrive at this moment, many late nights. It's never an easy journey to receive this degree that will be held in your hands very soon. The love of family members and friends, the guiding of teachers. Yes, a few shouts I love to my own high school, Mary Ward, where teachers and a former principal are here. And those who have helped to guide us along this journey make us who we are. But the challenges are ahead are even more profound than the challenges that we faced. In fact, I believe every single day challenges are placed in front of us, sometimes in very evident ways and sometimes in very quiet but profound ways. When I was doing my own undergrad, a mentor, an individual who was serving on the board of our charity at the time, a man by the name of Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Some of you might know the name. He won the Nobel Peace Prize work for his efforts helping to lead the anti-apartheid struggle in South Africa, one of the great religious icons of our time, but one of the great moral icons of our time. I told him how in passing that while I was an undergrad at the time that I had chosen to stop reading the newspaper. Because it seemed that every day, no matter what, the newspaper was full of stories of violence and stories of poverty and stories of neglect and suffering and all the the negative that so often washes over our world. And so I stopped reading the newspaper because I didn't want to see the same story, different headline, different day, but the same story of suffering. And the Archbishop looked at me in that moment and he shook his head and his exact words as he said, college boy, what are they teaching you kids in school these days? And he said, you're looking at it completely the wrong way. Because the newspaper is not a collection of all the violence and the negative and the suffering in the world, he said. He said, the newspaper is God's to-do list delivered right to your front door every morning. Now, I don't believe that you have to share his particular faith. In fact, I don't believe you have to share any faith at all to appreciate the meaning behind his words. He said, we live our lives one of two very simple ways. On one hand, we see the suffering and we turn the page. We see the story in the evening news and we change the channel. We see the person who's homeless with an outstretched hand and we walk past We see the ethical challenges that our world faces with science and technology. We see the student who maybe needs a little extra helping hand. We see those in our lives who face mental health or other issues. We see friends who are going through challenges. And on one hand, we simply walk past. It's someone else's problem. It's government, society, some other teacher, some other parent. Not my child, not my reality. Or we choose to lean in. We choose to kneel down. We choose to ask how we can help. We choose to want to make a difference. We choose to believe. You know, it's interesting, as I was doing research for this address, I found that apparently uh, in the U.S. convocations this year, the tradition has been tough talk, is how they phrased it to graduates, and telling them not to dream too high and not to set their goals too lofty, lofty. And I disagree with that fully. Because I believe that we have to rise up to the challenges that our world puts in front of us every single day. Challenges to do what is right. Because as you have this degree in your hand, it is a tool. It is a gift. It is an opportunity. Innovate. You know, this is an institution that prides itself on innovation. This is an institution that has given birth to extraordinary technological advancements and graduates who have continued those technological advancements well beyond this space. This is an institution that has shaped the consciousness of students. This is an institution that has empowered teachers to further teach and created those who have continued on their studies. At the core of that innovation is a constant curiosity, a desire to always be humble enough to be willing to learn. So if I can draw upon one other great leader I've had the honor to spend time with. Much of our work, as you heard, we built about a thousand schools in underprivileged communities around the world, the majority of them in Africa. We have the honor to spend time with some incredible kids and some incredible leaders in those communities. And one of them before he passed was Nelson Mandela. My brother and I, and forgive me, allow me to add why my brother is not with me, co-receiving this distinguished honor. He's actually in Africa as we speak. He's doing the development work and was meant to fly back and flight connection on a small tomrock plane did actually not depart on time. And so for that reason, it's an honor to accept on behalf of both of us. But due to our work in Africa, we have the honor to meet the late Nelson Mandela and to once ask him a question. 
And what do you ask Nelson Mandela when you have the honor to ask him a question? So we asked him, what is your philosophy of leadership? And I don't know exactly what I, I thought he'd say. I thought maybe he'd reflect on 27 years of prison, fighting for what he believed in South Africa, for freedom and equality no matter the color of your skin. Maybe I thought he'd reflect on being president of South Africa, that, that famed address that he gave standing in front of his nation, first time united. He said, our greatest fear is not that we are powerless. Our greatest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Because he said we are afraid of our potential because we sometimes feel that we are not meant for greatness. But we are all meant for greatness, he went on to say. I thought maybe he would reflect on that time of his life, but he didn't. He reflected that his greatest lesson of leadership he ever learned was when he was a young boy, when he was a child. He grew up so poor that he didn't think he'd have a chance to go to elementary school. Never mind a distinguished institution like this one. In fact, it was only fluke and an extended family member, by the chance he had a chance to go to school, he was so poor he couldn't afford a pair of shoes as a child. He thought that his life journey was to be a shepherd. And so one day he remembers as a young child, maybe five, six years old, that he was brought to the pen where all the goats and the sheep were kept. And his family said, it's now your responsibility to bring them out to pasture. And all excited at this, this challenge, this honor, this, this opportunity in front of him, he unlatched the gates of the pen, ready to lead them out to the green grass of the pasture. He threw open the door and proceeded to march ahead very proudly, ready to lead them. And then he turned back and he realized that somehow the goats and the sheep didn't get the memo. They didn't know he was the leader. They were just staying in that nice, comfortable pen. So he shouted at them. He called out to them. He, he, he you know, his young child would. He kind of stamped his feet. He remembers his family laughing. He was getting red in the face. He did everything he could. He was getting frustrated. He was getting angry. And he realized in that moment that the only way to lead them from where they were to where they were supposed to be was not to march ahead, but it was actually to go behind, to gently nudge them forward. They went a little too far to the left to tuck them in, a little too far to the right to tuck them in. And if anyone watched from a hill, they would have seen this goat and sheep group leading this young boy trying to catch up behind, running as fast as he could as, as they were moving ahead. They would have thought that he was the follower, that they were the leader. They finished first. They arrived first. They got to the destination first. But of course, he gently shepherded them along the way. What does it mean to innovate? I believe it means to be humble enough to always ask, to try, to fail, to, to learn, to strive again and again and again. You know, I know I'm standing in front of not only social studies and humanities, but also fact of education. I wanted to pull that story particularly because you will be helping students on their journey of innovation. You will help them fail and then succeed. You will coach them quietly so they think they succeeded themselves. You will be there and the truth is there is no moment where a flashing light suddenly says you are about to change the life of a student. But the guidance and the coaching and the love and the kindness and the respect and the patience will be extraordinary in their journey. And I end on connect. You know, much of our work, as I mentioned, is in East Africa. And in this one particular time we were building schools, we had this group of young Canadian students who were with us building. We were laying the foundation side by side with the local community. We're in a, a, a group, a traditional tribal community called the Maasai in Kenya, in East Africa. And they're simple schools, but very simple homes. And as the walls of brick rose on the schools, and as we hoisted up the roof, we didn't even notice that the, the skies overhead started to fill with these dark clouds. So dark. As they started to pour on us. And if any of you have ever been in East Africa, when it rains, it's like the heavens open. It just comes down all of a sudden. And so we went running towards the local homes that are called minyatas. These homes that are very basic. These homes made of mud and dung and sticks. And these homes made of thatch roof. And these homes that are barely sheltered by our standards in North America. These homes where we were shivering and cold as the rain came down in these torrential downpours. These homes that we quickly noticed were almost empty. 
Because as we were running into the homes, out of the rain, the local community, they were running into the rain. They were singing. They were dancing. The kids were splashing in the puddles. The the elders were clapping their hands in this beautiful, beautiful traditional dance. The younger children were trying to jump to touch the raindrops before they hit the ground. And as we were shivering and cold, confused what was going on, this local elder came to us. He grabbed me by the forearm, dragged me outside, dragged me into the rain. And he looked at me and he said, dance, celebrate, give thanks. Today we are lucky. Today we are, we're blessed. He said, today the rain will ensure our crops grow. And we can sell the extra and send our children to school. Think how lucky we are today. This is what we should celebrate. And I remember standing there, soaked to the skin as dozens and dozens of community members around me were encouraging me to stand and start to jump. And I started to jump with them and to sing. And listen, I'm not a very good singer, but I started to sing with them and to clap my hands. And in this moment, as we were all jumping and singing, connecting this culture, melding away in this beautiful moment together, the only thought that could run through my mind was what it would take for us, like in Southern Ontario, to be so happy that we would literally run outside and dance in the rain. And then the thought went through my mind, maybe last night if the Leafs won the Stanley Cup instead of the other, like, I'm just saying, maybe we run outside. But listen, I'm idealistic. I'm not, you know, shamelessly idealistic. So that might take a few more generations at this rate. The the reason I share that, though, is today I hope you dance. Today I hope you sing. Today, I hope that you embrace and connect with the parents who have supported you or the aunts and uncles who have cheered you on or the grandparents who I promise, if this is a big day for you, it is the biggest day for them. And those around who have stood by you, the loved ones, significant others, for some of you, your own children, some of you who have families of yourself. I hope that you celebrate this day with the same wild abandonment, the same joy and gratitude that that community felt for the simple blessing of rain. Because if you're in this room, you have won the lottery of life to hold this diploma and to have the future ahead of you. So dance, celebrate, and be joyful. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kielberger, for those very inspiring words. Would the candidates for the following degrees please stand? Master of Arts, Master of Education, Masters of Science, Graduate Diploma, Bachelor of Education. Here we go. Bachelor of Arts, honors. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, as Vice Chair of Academic Council and on behalf of the Academic Council of the University, I present to you these candidates and certify that they have fulfilled all degree program requirements and have been recommended for graduation by their faculty. You all look so beautiful. I'm so proud of you. And therefore, I am happy to say, on the recommendation of Academic Council of the University, I hereby confer upon these candidates the degrees to which they have demonstrated their entitlement and grant to them all the honors rights and privileges appertaining hereto, and I call upon them upon hearing their names to present themselves before this convocation to receive the degree. I also confer the degree upon those who have been approved for the degree, but who are absent from this convocation. 
Candidates, please be seated. Candidates for the degree of Master of Arts and Master of Education from the Faculty of Education may now approach the platform. Lauren Fridman. <laughs> Heather Latham. <laughs> Introducing candidates for the degree of Master of Education. Catherine Famel Arigalo. Carrie Anderson. <laughs> Marie Babin Labrachelle. There we go. And Darius Baruchka. <laughs> James Brake. Saraji Kor Disha. <laughs> Alyssa Doria. <laughs> Victoria Jane Dykes. <laughs> Stephen Forbes. <laughs> Michael Hunt. Terry Lynn Jones, John Kassar, Vera Katashivek, Nora Katab, Jessica Letterman. Lynn Love. <laughs> Melanie Mass. <laughs> Jamie Muldoon. <laughs> Gina Payman. <laughs> Stephanie Pereira. Sarah Purdy. <laughs> Philip Raby. <laughs> Ronald Simcoe. <laughs> Janina C. Kenra. Kill many West. Fareen Zaidi. This concludes the inception of graduates for the degrees of Master of Arts and Master of Education from the Faculty of Education. We're now presenting the candidates for the degree of Master of Arts 
and Master of Science from the Faculty of Social Science and Humanities. Mehek Arif. Victoria Dawn Ginsley. Dallas Hill. Victoria Danielle Hunt. Stephanie Danielle Matusayak. Kevin Miles. Introducing candidates for the degree of Master of Science, Forensic Psychology, Maha Furuk. And this concludes the inception of graduates for the degrees of Master of Arts and Master of Science from the Faculty of Social Science and Humanities. Presenting candidates for the for the de graduate for the graduate of no sorry it's <laughs> introducing candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Education Luck Shu Ambi <laughs> Samantha Rigolo. <laughs> Christina Belidi. Sydney Bielus, Jason Borg, Kelly Bradley, Emily Louise Bruno, Michelle Bruno, Shondell Busby. Jesse Glenn Campbell. Lachlan David Bruce Campbell. <laughs> Curtis Carmichael. Daniela Maria Catalano. Sagika Chandre, Jessica Alexis Cohen, Sabrina Rosemary Colosimo, Chantel Mallory Cook, Bailey Marina Coyle. Caitlin Coyne. Laura DeYoung. <laughs> Shana Demain Prata. Neil Douglas. Elizabeth Finlan, Faculty Medal. Allison Foster. Stefania Greer. Heather Goldsmith. Edwina Yingyang Wang. Christopher Hunt. Mihai Lo Illich. 
Lisa Jensen. Emily Joan. Colin Stanley K. Joshua Kent. Thamina Khan. Lauren Marie Kowalczyk. Stephanie Rachel Lang. Leslie Marie Lozon. Michelle Lemmy. Justin Leet. Gordon Lee. Johnny Lung. Rose Marshoni. Alessandra Daniela Marini. Rosaria Serena Marsala. Givanina Martin. Sylvia Gonslevs Martin. Amazing. Talene Mazian. <laughs> Kathleen McKenna. Andrea McMillan. Kaylin Metcalf. Shamila Madasser. Angela Newman. Brooklyn Kimberly Nobe Prez. Sandra Opong. Jordan Osso. <laughs> Audrey Denbach. <laughs> Lindsay Taylor Palmer. Elena Christina Panopoulos. <laughs> Bavini Patel. <laughs> Raisa Patel. <laughs> Margaret Pearson. <laughs> Philippe Pontes. Alana Principe. <laughs> Mathuna Vegita Raja Kamur. <laughs> Brittany Deneen Reeve. Derek. James Rocha. Marie Linda Rolf. This is for all the children who miss their mommies and daddies. Wayne Saba Nyagam. Francis Bianca Salaveria. 
Allison Nicole Saunders. Pedro Rudy Shaka. Okay. Alexandra Shaw. Jessica Daniela Sidas. Sabrina Simpatico. Michael Sapidius. Jesse Robert Smiley. Emily Ann Smith. Tyler Ryan Snellgrove. Nicholas Esmond Stavro Shuldov. Shirley Thang. Christina Turco. <laughs> Brett Matthew Turpin. Angela Sarah Vivacqua. Giuliano Volpe. Olivia Victoria Volpe. Victoria Eucharitkis. Introducing candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Honors, Adult Education, and Digital Technology. Brandon Thomas Carson. Anthony King. Mary Rose Thaler. Matthew Owen Ware. Jamila Bentham. Marie Diana Marie Brito. Okay. <laughs> Daniela Gail Castle. Sarah Cutress. Candace Duval Clark. Serena Shamela Eccleston. Jenna Joanne Fallis. Ebony Glover. Amber Ellen Greenfield. Melissa Jean Baptiste Hippo. Nadia Kassif. Alicia Rebecca Landon. Glorious Mykar. Glenda Nelson. Stephanie Louise Rada. Aliyah Ramjohn.
Kaylee Elizabeth Roden. Jennifer Jacqueline Short. Cheryl Justine Schuldey. This includes the, the inception of graduates for the degree of Bachelor of Education and Bachelor of Arts honors from the Faculty of Education. Introducing candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts Honors in Communication, Jaspreet Singh Heron. <laughs> Introducing now candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts Honors in Communication and Digital Media Studies, Sarah Aftab. <laughs> Olwaranti Mary Akani. Richard Michael Ashman. Sadia, Sadia Badon. <laughs> Rebecca Broderick. <laughs> Jacob Bugelli. Justin Singh Dafu. Quinn Doherty. Marissa George. Nicole Madeline Guest. William Corey Helliwell. Julianne Hernandez. Leanne Hutchison. Emma Kuhn. Kelsey Rose Latin. Jailen Mahmoud. Rosalind Akosa Nyantaki. Aaron Andrea O'Brien. Christy Lynn Pankhurst. Samuel George Plenner. Michaela Ray. Claudine Sabat. Hannah May Scott. Rachel Sarah Duke. Abel Schmelitz. Catherine Stewart. <laughs> Philip Surendra Trapp. <laughs> Megan Wheels. Alexandra Wismayer. Connie Shion. Introducing now candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts Honors in Community Development and Policy Studies. Alexis Cheyenne Ford. Emily Rowe. Ro sorry, Emily Rose Rousel. <laughs> J. 
Drew Gordon Wade. Introducing now candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts Honors in Criminology and Justice, Jeremy Abakan. Atifa Afganyar. Ali Basharat Ahmed. Lawrence Suleiman Akintoye Bentola. Raul Alexa. Tyler Xavier Ali. Joseph Pedrosa Ambat. Jessica Julie Arndt. Mithuna Balasubramaniam. Emily Margaret Barbati. Adam David Bartholomew. Brittany Mackenzie Beers. Mitchell Bennett. Ryan Booth. Jessica Borromeo. Elias Buzed. Brandon Joseph Bowmans. Aaron Nancy Brand Saliba. Olivia Brunetto. Lisa Nicole Brown. Marsha Brown. Senum Stephanie Bruce Camavor. David Calhoun. Brian Chan. Evanash Chandra. Kenneth Chow. Lisa Ann Christian. Sean Aaron Christopher. Alexander Rodrigo Cucovillo. Shandrika Angela Dawkins. Dana Monique Densham. Ali Diblau. Becca Earl. Verenad Prabhashwara Edramana. Sabrina Samantha Elahi. Praveen Elango. Robert Estabrooks. Tishana Etienne Harris. Montana Fazi. Nigel O'Neill Fingal.
Jonathan Forrester. Nicole Fournier. Lindsay Nicole Frigganese. Jaden George. Crystal Alexis Gonzalez. Catherine Rose Goodwin. Dion Ann Griffiths. Stefan Grujic. Matthew Carter Grundy. Joshua Ybeltel Habtwilt. Dustin Neil Hadley. Safi Haderzada. Alexander Hartling. Nizar Hassam. Rayan Hatoum. Courtney Nicole Hobbs. Oliver Nelson Holmes. Kiana, Kiana Alexandria Holder. Basil Hussein. Annalisa Yakabuchi. Jade Antoinette James. Myron Jayakumar. Kayla Johnson. Chelsea Joseph. Navpreet Kanda. Laxagan Kanathasan. Stefan Karajov. Stephen Kassar. Samantha Catherine Kasmer. Emily Kohek. Richard Laszlo Korotsas. Nicole Catherine Lafontaine. Cher Laguerre. Raphael Angelo Lansang. William Edward Lawless. Vivian Liu. Onisha Lindsay. Katie Nicole McKay. Michael Magnanti. Gabrielle Tiana Malcolm. Arshan. 
Arka Mesut. Jessica May. Sarah McCorkadale. Shane McIntosh. Megan Elizabeth McKinley. Tyler Mercier. Lauren Drew McCucci. Christian Angelo Milani. Mustafa Mirzada. Kelly Ann Mitchell. Jordan Mitten. Anna Montrose. Tara Kea Morgan Paul. Brendan Anwar Muhammad. Leah, Leah Monroe. Kristen Victoria Mary Myhill. Akbar Naim. Sam Nasrolapur. Alexander Nedelkov. Vasilios Nicolaitis. Trita El Nanin. Merit Elohor Omido. Alan Orzajowski. Ahmad? Ahmad Sir Pagzad. Prakis Parajalingam. Bavisa Patel. Sunjit Pathmananan. Michael Jack Pazienza. Mohammed Yazdani Rahim. Shara Rajajendran. Jonathan Daniel Rakimpasun. Shimona Ratansi. Kelsia Rutnaraja. Latika Revers. Emma Kathleen Ritter. Romagnolo? Joseph Romagnolo. Arsima Hedrum Rossam. Jessica Marie Ann Saldana. 
Benjamin Sefa. Heather Selby. Russell Ross Quillen Serrano. Sujenta Chandra Kumar. Gary Sharma. Vishnavi Amanda Sharveswara. Cassandra Singh. Emily Smith DeRushi. Kevin Snellings. Thatsa Suryakumar. Ainsley Savaral. Riley Rose Figarelli. Rubina Spiropoulos. Michael John Steos. Devendra Kumar Steo. Narissa Sutherland. Krista Thero. Kabilan Thiakalingam. Alexandra Brianne Thompson. Patrick Say. Kirk Vanderster. Jacqueline Victoria Velasquez. Alexa Vela. Sydney Lane Waller. Brian Andrew Walsh. Cerise Wilson. Jeff Yip. Nicole Zajac. Introducing candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts Honors Forensic Psychology, Lena Mariam Ahmed. Rama Ahmed. Andrea Andrus. Tanisha Arlseelan. Sarah Bell. Batros? Joseph Batros. Michael Bowerman. Laura Elizabeth Brighton. Jenna Burns. Connie Cancellara. Simran Kaur Chandi. Shankavi Chandraraja. 
Cassandra Catherine Chen. Dondra Santana Daly. Nicole Lori Davy. Malika Dung. Chantal Doval. Leah Michelle Dubray. Emma Ducalau. Patrick William Duncan Dunstall. Stephen Tyler Dwyer. Megan Morgan Ferguson. Our next graduate is the faculty medal recipient, Rebecca Fisico. Selena Christine Fraser and Hennessy. Shoshana Taylor Frumpkin. Peter Timothy Gaheen. Victoria Graf. Megan Elizabeth Gretton. Taylor Alexandra Hill. Clark Hinchberger. <laughs> Tiffany Amber Hunt. Lareb Hussein. Kristen Jarvis. Gabriel Jewett. Hamdi Jamali. Sarah Louise Johnston. Justin Frederick Keim. Mia Marissa Khalifa. Nicholas Krush. Patricia Giselle Lansang. Brianne Ilonda Lisinki. Rachel Ma. Gianna Rachelle McDonald. Daniel Magnanti. Athisan Mahendra Raja. Paola Mancini. Sayan Alexia Marks. Rachel Matthews. Rochelle Montague. Rabia Nahid. Carol Claudia Nicholas. 
Vanessa Nicholson. Robert James O'Donnell. Connor Young Owens. Rachel Kathleen Parr. Michelle Heather Patterson. Dominic Persaud. Glenn Emmanuel Pisco. Pluskina? Alexandria Pluskina. Lucas William Robinson. Nicole Robinson. Darlene Saft. Raghavan Sanjayan. Taylor Patrick Shaw. Caleb Michael Shevel. Trisha City Hackus. Imogen Anna Snell. Dana Marie Stoiku. Monica Shota. Amna Tarek. Alan Tu. Crystal Vias. Cassidy Wagner. Alicia Wilson. Corey James Wilson. Darian Emily Wilson. Renee Wilson. Rebecca Jennifer Wood. Johanna. Johanna Rachel Young. Introducing candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts Honors in Legal Studies, Saskiani Adeklat. Laganen and Amrithalingam. Legal Studies! Awadala. Marina Awadala. Bampersad. Melanie Bampersad. Maya Jo Blake Janier. Rael Jules Dakota Bridge. Nicole Catherine Brooks. Elizabeth Lane Cabusle. Tasha Chase. Nasheen Karim Dar. Yeah. 
Aman Nazmi Dean. Emily Elizabeth Elliott. Jennifer Elizabeth Hull. Mitchell William Hunt. Jennifer Kurukula Saria. Simone Lazzarini. Danielle Linton. Yusuf Amir Marvianto. Tambani Kirkaldi McCormick. Paige Rebecca Minicola. Natasha Maria Mitzi. Linda Nguyen. Patrick Ken Palmer. Sundas Pervez. Kelsey Simone Russell. Tahisha Eileen Schoon Allen. Scott Kenneth Stevenson. Bisha Suresh Kumar. Joanna Cilio. Tammy Ternowski. Adam Valentine Tomlinson. Hannah Valerie. Nicolas Villeneuve. Samuel Wong. Tiffany Wong. Zarwin Young. Introducing candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts Honors in Political Science. Hira Abbasi. Stephanie Barrett. Sadaf Parwiz. Victoria Noel Ruck. Sarah Michelle Ventura. Nicholas Whelan. This concludes the inception of graduates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts Honors from the Faculty of Social Science and Humanities. Ms. Chancellor, this concludes the inception of graduates for this convocation.
Congratulations, graduates. As you know, you did not get the opportunity to graduate today on your own. At its heart, a university is not defined by its deans or its provost or even its president or chancellor. It is you, our now former students, and your professors who really make UOIT the great university that you now represent. I would like to ask all faculty present who taught students graduating today to rise if they are able and be recognized by our newest alumni. Your family and other supporters played a key role in your journey to success as well. Graduates, please take a moment and acknowledge their help and support in your achievement. I now invite Caitlin Gambier, Faculty of Business and Information Technology graduate from the class of 2013 and a member of UOIT's Alumni Association Council to address convocation. Caitlin? Congratulations again, class of 2018. My name is Kate Gambier, and as the chair of your Alumni Association Council, I want to officially welcome you to our alumni community. I can't believe that it's been five years since I was where you are now, with my proud, loving family cheering me on as I cross the stage to accept my own degree. My four years at URIT are some of my fondest memories, but I promise you that alumni life can be just as fulfilling and memorable. And now, you are officially a member of our alumni network, which after this week will be more than 17,000 strong. So, we want to hear your news and successes on your journeys ahead and help share the story of our university far and wide by telling the world about our fellow alumni. We want you to stay engaged with our university. Keep your contact information up to date be sure to be sure that you don't miss out on an event happening close to you. Follow us on social media, tag us in your adventures, and visit our alumni website often to stay connected with us. We have a great lineup of events planned across the GTA and we look forward to welcoming you back to campus this fall for our annual Alumni Day. Also, this June 19th, the Career Center invites you to iLaunch My Career Conference. This one-day event has information and tools to help you transition into the working world. Details are included in your alumni package, which we will get today, and on our website. Finally, everyone, parents, grandparents, partners, spouses, other guests, and of course, all of our grads and you, the new alumni, please be sure to join us across the street at 61 Charles to continue the celebrations with your faculty reception. So, in closing, today marks the end of your time as a student, the end of those long summer breaks and extended weekends, the end of club meetings, tutorials, study groups, the end of thinking that even an 8 a.m. or maybe even a 9.30 a.m. class was far too early, but now is the beginning of your time. This is now your time to take on this world, and you've got this. Congratulations once again to the class of 2018. Thank you. May this university give those who seek to find and share knowledge, inspiration, and opportunity to make our world a better place for all. May our graduates go forward with inquisitive minds and passionate resolve to make a difference. Guests, please remain in your seats until the faculty and graduate processions have exited convocation. Madam Chancellor, this convocation of the University of Ontario Institute of Technology is now concluded.